Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. I'm going to make this a brief video, and I'm going to quickly run through the process for creating your own static meshes that you can put into your map to use as modular building pieces with a working pivot point to where you can actually rotate it based off the corner so you can actually rotate it, get it to where you want it and it actually snaps to the floor instead of wherever it feels like because your pivot points in the wrong location and we're going to make these with BSP geometries and convert them into static meshes with multiple materials so that you can then later go back in and go to your floor or whatever piece you're making and you can see you've got a sidewall, you've got a top, you've got um, a bottom so you have a total of three materials you can have as many as you want for as many faces as you have but I can then go back in and change this one just by going to the drop down list and applying whatever I want for the material in the actual static mesh. So without further ado I am going to delete this guy, delete this guy and I always recommend going into a map that you can use specifically for creating these meshes. So I'm going to remake this map, do file, new level, default, don't save. First thing, get rid of this guy. You won't need it for this. You grab this and anything that's hovering in the sky and just drop them below ground level just to get them out of your, your vision. You want to grab your player start because you want to go to your world settings game mode override whatever your standard game mode is go to your player start move him out of the way go to your details panel and I'm actually going to move him to negative 750 I'm going to delete the existing floor I'm going to grab a BSP geometry I'm going to grab it in here and I'm going to zero zero negative 10 going to make it 1000 by 1000 by 10 so now the top of your floor in theory if you look your pivot point is right there in between it's sandwiched in the middle and that's okay but let's go ahead and make this negative 15 so that the top of the floor is exactly zeroed out. So now if I grab another box, put it in here, and I use my basic rule of thumb, half of this would be 100. If you want to verify you're perfectly on the floor level, you look, it's not. So let's grab this first one, and let's take it back to negative 10. So now, we want to make sure that you're actually on the floor. Grab our other one, make sure it's z um, at that, which should be 100. We notice that it's actually not on the floor. So let's actually make this to negative 5 to follow the same basic rule of thumb. Half of the z height is where it should be here. So that should have your floor lined up perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to rename this to be our floor. And then, as part of what you should always do, is create a new folder. Call this map. Whatever. I'm going to call mine map. Shit. I'm going to grab everything, including the player start, drag it into the map shit folder, and close it. And then I'm going to go ahead and save all. And. I'm just going to overwrite that one. Give it a name. This is your test map. And now you're good to go. Don't worry about building lighting or anything like that. Um, we look at this right here. We notice that our character is off. So I'm actually going to change this to 2000 by 2000. And we're going to save all to make sure that our, our workspace is set. So we're good. 
now that we have all that, we can now begin to, hey, what's up, buddy? Is actually create our first piece. And what we want to do is I'm going to grab a BSP geometry and I'm going to make a floor panel like I did before. And I'm going to make this at 500 by 500 by 20. We're going to use a standard wall thickness of that. And so that we're actually on the floor, we want this on our Z transform over here. Since it's 20, we want to try this at 10 and that'll have us perfectly on the floor. Now, the next thing I want to do is I didn't apply a material whenever I created it. So I'm actually going to go over here and select a material. I'm going to start off with the wood pine. I am going to now select one face by left clicking on it. I'm going to hit select here under geometry. Select all adjacent surfaces. Now I'm going to hit this arrow. And now all of them are going to have that wood texture to it. But that's not how I'm going to keep it. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to give it another material. I selected that face, select my material, hit the arrow. And I want the bottom to have another texture. So to do that for now, I'm going to raise it up, look underneath, select that face, and I'm going to give it another material. So now you have a material on the bottom, material on the side, and a material on the top and I'm going to change mine back to zero. As you can see, when I zero it out, it went into the floor a little bit. So we're going to have to put that at 10 for now. So it's sitting there. So what we want to do now is we want to fix our pivot point so that it's actually on the corner and on the bottom of it. So now before we turn it into a, a um, this BSV geometry into an actual mesh, a static mesh, we want to fix this. So I've already got a mesh folder created in my assets folder. You want to have that so that you can get into the habit of placing your meshes there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select this little button right here to change my viewpoint. And what I want to do here is I want to hold down the alternate key and the middle mouse button and now I can drag my pivot point. You can see it on that view. It changes. Now I want to zoom in as far as I can so that I can make sure that I hold down the alt and middle mouse button and make sure that I snap it right there to the edge and same thing to move it down you can right click and change your view and alternate middle mouse and now I've got it onto that corner but you can see it's on the middle yeah I'm waiting on a certain asset pack to get finished right now and I've already started creating one. So, uh, yeah, uh, Battle Royale um, with a twist. Instead of just the na normal, everybody's got a Battle Royale. And you don't want to be just like everybody else, do you? So, so now I want to find where my pivot point is. You see it's right there. Now, I want it to be on this corner, so I'm going to hold down the alternate middle of the mouse button and drag it and again I want to zoom in as far as I can so that I get it right there on that exact corner so now if I look we are there we're on the bottom edge of that corner so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and not on it, but I just want to right click over here and pivot. Set pivot as offset. And then I can go back to normal again. So now, whenever I go ahead and select, if this is not available, you see in your brush settings, click right here, create static mesh. Go to your folder, mesh, and let's give it a name. We're going to call this SM for static mesh underscore floor create static mesh next thing I want to do is I want to go into it and before I get too crazy I'm actually going to hit control Z and undo it now it didn't undo making it a um, static mesh but it left that box brush there alone the way it was before so we can use it to make another piece 
So while I'm actually here in my static mesh, I, I want to look, see, I have three materials that I can work with, and I can change those now anytime I want to. Um, and you can actually change them in blueprints if you want as well. But I want to scroll down to general settings. I want to change my light map resolution to 64, light map coordinates to 1, and I want to go ahead and go to collision, and I want to add a box simplified collision and hit save. Now, when I grab my static mesh, drop it in here, you can see my pivot point is where I want it to be. So whenever I go to rotate it, it'll rotate off of that corner. So I can rotate it 90 degrees, and you can see it is perfectly on the floor. It is not going through the floor. Everything looks lovely. <clears throat> and this is how you want to do your, your static meshes. So now, I've already got that information saved on here. So I can do this either of, of two ways. I can continue building off of this to make a corner, a corner or, or a regular wall with a door frame. I can make all of my modular pieces that I need off of this, or I can do it another way. I'm going to leave this here and actually just move it off to the side if I want to. Um, it should now, if I zero this out, it should be just fine. But now if I grab my, my static mesh, place it in here, if I try to zero this out, zero, zero, and zero it is putting the but I'll just get rid of that guy I can remake that quickly now whenever I put that static mesh in here if I control C control V and then rotate I can rotate it 90 degrees and rotate another 90 degrees control V and rotate it 180 degrees and there I've been able to plop down four pieces and the, they all fit side by side by side lovely right so if you want to actually do modular wall pieces um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this guy in here and if I want it to be perfectly zeroed out now I know that it's gonna be at zero 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 but that's not gonna fit right but since we we make all of our our base floor pieces 500 by 500 now I can just do negative 250 and negative 250 I'm sorry 250 and now that's going to be zeroed out completely the middle is actually going to be in the zero axis of the map itself so if I drag another one in here just to, to give an example and I zero it out we can see that our piece that we put in here is perfectly in the middle so now to build modular wall sections on top there's a couple different wall types you want to create and again I'm going to start off with a material selected of the wood pine that's just the one that I'm using and this is starter content by the way and that way when I throw my BSB geometry into here it's actually going to be that material and I know that the location that I need to be is in negative 240 and zero and to make sure that it's sitting directly on the floor you see it's at 120 so that's good I snapped it onto that by throwing it on there first and yes the battle royale thing I, I will do more on that video here soon um, getting stuff prepared for it I'm actually gonna make my own but also if you want you can get a survival game kit from the marketplace and it's a very good starting point with destructible mesh buildings you can create and crafting and weapons and so forth. I'll do more on that here soon. So we're going to take this wall and we want to get a normalized wall thickness of 20. So since we're, we're going to need to modify our geometry, we want a Z height of 300, which I found is a good overall wall height. I'm going to have this selected again so I can bring this up to be on top of the floor again. Now you could do some basic math and it should be at 170. So just do 170. And now we want to go ahead and, and make it to where it fits. So our X value is going to be 20. So it's the right wall thickness. And we want to go ahead and set the Y to 500. So now we have a perfect wall. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and change my materials. I want the outside material to be separate from the sides 
and I want the inside to be a different material from everything else. So screw it, let's go ahead and throw that on there. So we now have three materials, an inside, an outside, and a side. This should be sufficient enough for most applications. So with that, we're not going to actually combine it with that floor piece. We're going to make a complete separate standalone. A couple different reasons for that, because we can also convert it later, if we want to, into a destructible mesh, but that's a whole different story. So now, with this modular wall section piece, what I want to do is I'm going to save two different versions of it. I'm going to go to my mesh folder, and I'm going to go ahead and save this as a static mesh. But what I want to do is I want to fix my pivot point first. I want my pivot point to be at the bottom, and I would say figure out if you want it to be on your left or on your right or on the center, depending on how you want to rotate it. I'm actually going to put it in the bottom right. So to fix my pivot point from, for our BSP geometry, I'm going to go ahead and again click this location. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down the alternate key and middle mouse button. And I'm going to drag this down here. I'm going to get it close. And now I can hold my right mouse button and I want to find where it is zoom in and then again alternate key middle mouse button and drag it around get it to that bottom corner and you look this is the front view so I actually want to go ahead and grab this one and move it to here so as you see in our, our view here I've just snapped it to this front wall section and this very corner right here and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to save pivot point as or set as pivot offset click this again now we're good for our standard wall piece and I'm going to go ahead and first off I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a static mesh if I click off of it and click back on it, it saved it. You can see our pivot point still there. So create static mesh. Go to my mesh folder and I'm going to give it a name. Um, SM underscore wall underscore in. Create static mesh and then I'm going to control Z so I can undo that. So I keep my BSP geometry and if I want I can go ahead and throw my wall in but I want to go ahead and open my wall piece up you can see it here we have all materials applied to it looks lovely go down to general settings 64 and 1 64 on light map resolution and light map coordinates index 1 then collision we're gonna add a box simplified collision you can see now I've got a green line that goes all the way around it and we have a regular collision hit save and that's it so now if we actually drag this into our map we can see that it's going to snap to the floor and our pivot is in this corner right here so I can actually pivot it the way I need to lovely the reason why I did control Z so I can undo it and leave it as a box brush is because I want to create a different type of wall and I'm going to do this two times. So the first way I'm going to do it is I'm going to click it this way on geometry editing. I'm going to make sure I'm in my movement mode. I'm going to grab this edge and this edge and I'm going to move them um, control Z. I want to change my snapping to 10. Make sure it's there and then I'm going to go ahead and do that twice. That's going to give me a 45 degree bevel on one edge now if you really wanted to be precise you should do one edge save it redo this edge and then do this edge and save it and then and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create multiples of this wall so we've got a regular wall that's square on on all edges and now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this mode 
our material uh, materials are still fine so I'm going to create static mesh go to my assets mesh folder we're going to call this SM underscore wall underscore um, RB right bevel create static mesh control Z so that we undid that I'm going to go ahead and create all the other pieces then I'll go back inside and fix them so I'll go back to my geometry editing I'm going to grab this and this I'm control left clicking so that I have both of them selected move it back over there and then I'm going to grab these two go back to this create static mesh select my folder mesh SM underscore wall underscore LB for left bevel create static mesh control Z now I'm gonna go back into my editor and I'm gonna grab this corner and this corner do the same thing again and what did I do um, why are you being a pain in my ass I want to click just on this corner control left just on this corner there we go and now both sides are beveled so then I can create static mesh assets mesh and I'm going to call this SM underscore wall underscore 2B or 2 bevels create static mesh control Z and then while you've got it in this position if you want to make a door frame then you want to do the same basic thing is then go ahead and create a go back into this mode create a new geom geometry create a box shown this a, a dozen times now keep in mind before you start applying it you want to go ahead and, and select a material now and we want to use that wood pine drag your BSP in now we want the X to be 22 which is just two over the the existing wall the Y needs to be 110 or 120 200 is fine on the height we're gonna make it subtractive we're gonna go ahead and make it at negative 240 0 and we want our height so that it's right there when in doubt go into the map and check it out now we have a wall that has a door opening and two bevels so what you would then do is go through the whole process again of saving those individual ones but now let's go back to our meshes before we get too far ahead of ourselves we got our wall normal is fine so we want to do wall two bevels double click open that one up again scroll down light map resolution 64 hit tab four times hit one and then now we need to look at our individual wall and you're gonna to want to make this for for your door frame you want to make three variations of that way you know no bevel one bevel two bevels and one bevel on either side rather so you're gonna have multiples of each wall sections to get it just right and so that you don't have this weird funky changing your collision complexity go to collision and you can select one of these I'm going to try the 26 DOP and then you can see it matches the contour perfectly for your collision max max mesh so now I'm going to hit save and I'm going to close that one I'm going to go to my one bevel do the same process light map resolution 64 1 2 3 4 1 tab just to make sure it's saved collision 26 DOP square 
everything looks good hit save this is a quick easy process just time consuming to make all the pieces that you need again one bevel scroll down 64 1 2 3 4 1 tab collision 26 DLP save and you are golden all of your pieces are now saved so you go into your map we're gonna drop a floor in lovely let's grab now I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete these I can well I can actually delete this one I don't need that one but we're gonna pretend we just dropped this one in which is our 2B and if I want a wall section that's gonna match up to this one with bevel on the right hand side then let's grab this let's rotate it 90 degrees and let's go ahead and set our position to it if we hit that at zero on the center it's gonna go that way if we do it on zero here it's gonna put it right there in the middle so now we can use our, our basic mathematics and let's say 240 you see it's gonna put it right there it'll actually put it on the outside edge because we planned it that way so now I want it to actually be negative 250 and on this one I can do negative 250 and it snaps it right there to the exact corner the exact lo location that we wanted to be and if we wanted this one to be a flat then that's how we would do it but if we want two bevels on this one again we can take our 2B drag it in here and let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees since we know it's going to snap to the outside edge we can do negative 250 negative 250 and zero now it's going to zero to the floor because of where I placed it there we go we're at 20 so it'll match up on top of there so if we wanted to put this one on the other side we can do control C control V do a rotate of 180 and we can manually slide it in position or we can go ahead and do it at 250 250 and 20 and I know that we're going to be perfect again control C control V I'm actually going to rotate this around 90 degrees and I can slide this in here until we hit negative 250 and there we go we've just snapped in that quickly our static meshes and made a simple modular building out of our wall pieces so when you're creating it and you do your lighting build so I'm going to for right now do a lighting build show you that this works and then we're going to wrap up this video you're going to want to do the same process for your door frame by having no bevel on either side one bevel on the right one bevel on the left and then two bevels and then you're going to want to go back and in each style of window frame section you're going to do the same thing so now if we go in here we've done a lighting build our materials look just fine we want to create um, a ceiling for this let's grab in our floor and we can go ahead and zero zero and 300 we're gonna have to change that again because it snaps to the middle right there so we'd end up doing actually negative 250 and 250 I'm just doing everything wrong here 250 and then let's raise it up and do a lighting build now it should be dark inside because there's no lighting but again you can see that you can quickly throw together a scene with your modular building components and make all kinds of cool stuff see there we go it is dark because there is no lights inside and then you can go ahead and do the same principle if you want to make your own custom furniture your own custom anything you could build all this stuff in here convert them to static mesh and make your own stuff so delete that I can delete my walls now I'm gonna leave this one because 
I need to keep working. I need to keep building the rest of my pieces. So like on my door frame right now, I can go ahead and select both of these so that I have my door frame and the wall piece. And then I want to create static mesh. Select my folder, mesh. I'll do this one as my final example here. And we're going to call this door, oh, excuse me, SM for static mesh, underscore door, underscore 2B, and create static mesh, control Z, so we undo modifying our BSPs, go into my new static mesh, scroll down, 64, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, tab, and then here's where we're going to run into a slight issue. If we try doing our collision now for our door, so we can walk through it as this, we're not going to be able to get through our door. This is where if you want that door frame to be serviceable, you're going to have to create your own custom uh, collision utilizing Blender. So this is the only one downfall of doing it this way. So I'm actually going to go back to my collision and remove collision. And for now, as a failsafe, until I can create my own collision, I'm going to modify collision complexity to use complex collision as simple. Not an optimal way of doing it, but short term while prototyping, this will get you by. So now I've got that door frame, so now I can just drop it into my map anytime I want. However, I screwed the pooch because I did not set my pivot. My pivot was saved there, so to prevent that, the easy way, I'm going to hit delete, get rid of what we just created. I'm going to select the box brush for my door frame, and then I'm going to select the other one with control left click. Now you see where the pivot point is, right? Now when we hit create static mesh, go back to our assets, our mesh folder, and recreate our name, sm underscore door underscore 2b create static mesh and now go back into it scroll down 64 tab 2 3 4 1 tab scroll down and save now control Z so actually screwed the pooch there we go. So we needed to control Z right after doing it. So now if we go back in here and look, we lost all our settings. 64, 1. That's why you want to immediately hit control Z after you tell it to create a static mesh so that you keep all your settings the way they are. So now if I set this in place, there we go. And if we walk over here, we can't actually go there but we can go through the door frame lovely I hope this guy this was very helpful for you um, I will actually do another video here shortly where I'll do questions and answers and I'm actually gonna be working on the rest of my pieces here so thanks for watching and I hope this video was very helpful for you to be able to create your own custom modular building pieces for creating stuff um, I'm doing a larger scale version but I want to showcase this for showing the actual um, correction of the pivot point so when you place your items you get your pivot point in the correct location to make it usable and easier to work with. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.